And Allah warns you in the Quran. No. You will be tested. Four. Allah Azza wa Jal will give you the greatest opportunities, the greatest number of chances to enter Jannah. In His mercy, in His Rahmah. For He is Ghafoor Rahim. Allah Azza wa Jal will give you so many chances, more than the coach, more than the student, more than the coach, sorry, more than the teacher, will give the, the student or the sports person. Allah Azza wa Jal will give you your whole life to try and enter Jannah. So He must give you opportunities. Allah Azza wa Jal must give you opportunities. So you need to be tested, yeah? So Allah Azza wa Jal will test you. Allah Azza wa Jal may inflict you with a sickness. Or you may go through struggle at school. Or someone may say something to you in the car when you were in hijab. Or you may meet a brother like Hassan before he became Muslim. Or so on and so forth. And all of you can give me examples of times where you have been tested. And what has been your response? For the extent of the test, the extent of the test, reflects the extent of your capability. Let me explain. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in Surah Baqarah, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah Azza wa Jalla will never burden a soul with more than it can bear. It doesn't make sense. Can you imagine on Yom Al Qiyamah, you're standing and say, Ya Rab, I went. It went too far. I couldn't take it. And Allah Azza wa Jalla actually agrees. Says, Yeah, actually, you know, it went too far. Can you imagine that? You're actually negotiating. It doesn't reflect on a complete God. For Allah Azza wa Jal, God knows your capability. Just like the coach knows the capability of the sports person. And just like the teacher knows the capability of the student. So the student comes home with a lot of homework. And the mother takes the student to school. And says to the teacher, why have you given him so much homework? Well, because he's brighter than the average student, or she is brighter than the average student, we give that child supplementary work. Because they can take it. So in other words, there is rank between those who choose Allah more and those who choose Allah Azza wa Jalla less. Some people pray Maghrib, Isha. Some people pray Maghrib, the Sunnah, Isha, the Sunnah, and so on and so forth. Some people choose Allah Azza wa Jal in a smaller fashion than other people who get up all night and pray Nafil and all the rest of it. So you all get opportunities. Every moment, every second is an opportunity. The Nabi Alayhi Salam said, the mere fact that you're going to work is ibadah. It's worship. The very, uh, the very lokma, um, the very bite side bite that you give your wife in her mouth is worship. It's a form of charity. The very smile you bear on your face. And the Prophet ﷺ said, believing begins with removing something that is obstruction, uh, obstructing the road or the way. Something in the way. Something harmful in the way. Remove it. That's where belief starts. Every opportunity you have a chance to choose Allah Azza wa Jal. Now some people have it harder than others. Some people have it harder than others. But it doesn't mean they can't bear it. For Allah Azza wa Jal says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. So Allah Azza wa Jal will test you and try you. To get the best out of you. Because he wants the best for you. So that on Qiyamah, 
When you stand in front of your Lord Azza wa Jal, you'll realize it is only because He tested you so much that you had the opportunity to prove your Iman. For if He doesn't test you, how will you prove yourself? And some will do better than others. Some people will do better than others. But it doesn't matter. What matters is you do your best. That's what matters. For Allah Azza wa Jalla says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Which means, I don't expect any more from you than your best. Simple as that. Which is a completely reasonable thing to ask. Now Allah Azza wa Jal will test you with micro tests and macro tests, big tests and individual tests. The big tests are things like tsunamis, earthquakes. You know when there was an earthquake in Turkey, I was at work and some brother said to me there was a nightclub on the border and there was a lot of dancing and drinking and that's why Allah Azza wa Jal destroyed that town. Possibly. Allahu Alam. But I can tell you one thing. There are a lot of nightclubs, a lot of drinking, a lot of dancing. And if Allah Azza wa Jal behaves that way, this dunya is in big trouble. Brothers and sisters, when people die because of a tsunami or because of a natural disaster or something massive like that, the test is not for those who went away. For they're gone. The test is for those who remain. The test is for you. What is going to be your response if your son drowns? What will be your response if your family disappear? What will be your response if your country is taken? Will you curse Allah Azza wa Jal? Do you honestly believe that simply because you call yourself Muslims, you're not going to be tested? And if you really think you're a strong Muslim and your Iman is strong, you're going to be tested in very tough ways. And the Nabi salam said, the Prophets were tested the hardest, for their Iman was the most. And after them, the Sahaba. The test is not for those who go away. The test is for those who remain. It's you. How will you respond? And then there are individual tests where Allah Azza wa Jal tests you by yourself, not a community, you by yourself. So right now the Ummah is weak. And you say, this Ummah, this Ummah, this Ummah. How come a, 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 a Sheikh from the Arab Emirates doesn't go and buy out God knows what and fix this whole problem? And why are they spending money on the Olympics and not fixing Palestine? And why are they blah, 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 blah? No, 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 no. The test is for those who remain. It's you. The question is, why aren't you in Salah? Why aren't you in thankfulness? It is an opportunity. Take it and seize it. To thank Allah Azza wa despite the pain. For the Nabi alayhi salam, he said, Ajib is the state of the Muslim. Bizarre. Bizarre is the condition of a Muslim. If bad happens to him or her, they say, Alhamdulillah, thank you God. And if good happens to him or her, it's the same response, Alhamdulillah. No matter what you do, the response is the same. It's a response of thankfulness. It's ajib, it's bizarre. You can't do anything to hurt the Muslim. A Muslim cannot be sad. For a Muslim is always in high spirits. Because a Muslim knows deep down inside that Allah Azza wa Jal in this struggle is giving me an opportunity to what? Gain Jannah. Can you imagine on Qiyamah you had no opportunity to gain Jannah and you stand and you say and Allah Azza wa Jal said Jahannam. You say, Ya Rabb, how could I have possibly scored Jannah? I never had the chance. Well, He's giving you chances and one of your chances may just be the death of a child. One of your chances may just be loss of eyesight. One of your chances may just be a loss of limbs. One of those chances may just be 
Palestine. And what are you going to do? How will you respond? The Prophet ﷺ, he lost every single one of his family members, his children, sorry, except Fatima in his time. Allah anha. All of them. Can you imagine all your children die in your lifetime? And when the Nabi ﷺ buried his last son, Ibrahim, what did he say? He said, alayhi salatu wassalam. He said, وَإِنَّ عَلَىٰ فِرَاكِكَ يَا إِبْرَاهِيمِ لَمَحْزُونِينَ وَلَا نَكُولُ مَا يُخْسِتُ الرَّبِّ He said something absolutely beautiful. He said, And on your departure, O Abraham, his son, we are very upset, sad. However, we will never say things to displease Allah Azza wa Jal. For the Prophet ﷺ, even he was tested. He was on the cusp, on the cusp of saying things he shouldn't say. And he said, There are families out there, brothers and sisters, it's not easy. I know it's hard. But think back to your beloved Prophet. He lost children. He fought battles. He buried his family. He fought his family. At one point they were eating the sand and they were eating trees. They had no food. And we struggle because we're in a car because someone next to us who's parked at the red light says something. And we take off our hijab or we refuse to pray or we shave the beard or whatever it is and we go into some sort of panic. Is that your response? Is it? You can do better than that, ya akhi. akhti. You can do better. For Allah is only giving you what you can take. You can't take all of your children dying. You can't go to war against your mother and father and brothers and sisters and uncles and family. The Sahaba could, but you couldn't. So Allah won't test you with that. Now what's even better is this. Allah Azza wa has given you a contract of success. It actually comes with good terms. For if you die in the process, you're a shaheed. For anybody who dies in the struggle in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal, it's a matter. Irrespective. You're a shaheed. And what more do you want than Allah Azza wa Jal guaranteeing you? Don't worry. It doesn't matter how hard you struggle. If you work in my favor, if you work for me, I'll give you Jannah guaranteed. And if you die in the process, guaranteed. So worry not, brothers and sisters. If you die of a terminal disease, you're a shaheed. So why are you upset so much when someone passes away? Muslims wear white at funerals. We say to the person who's dying, we will we, we, we'll follow you. Rest easy, we will follow you. If you drown, if you die and you drown, you're a shaheed. So when the tsunami came and so many Muslims had drowned, a lot of Muslims, why would Allah Azza wa send the tsunami to, and, and, and drown so many Muslims? Why doesn't He send the tsunami to God knows where? Where the kafar are? But this is their Jannah. Allah Azza just gave half of that population Jannah. If you die in a battle or if you die in these conditions, these macro tests, these catastrophic conditions, you almost automatically get Jannah. What's the issue? 